Hey guys, I've gotten a lot of questions on Excel and Access, and they, people want to know some of my secrets regarding how to develop an Excel and Access so easily and so fluidly, okay? So today I'm going to tell you every single one of them, alright? So let's get started right away. Excel is an incredible tool that has add-ins related to database, cube development, reporting, everything that you think that you, that you know about Excel hopefully can be broken just with the tip of this iceberg of this presentation. Okay, now just immediately we can just see, I just have some sample data here, alright, now let's uh, highlight everything, and then let's double click on one of those columns, straighten it out so we can see everything. As you can see here we have a filter that we've applied over the top, which we can f sort, or, uh, sort on smallest to largest, etc, etc. If I wanted to remove duplicates, all I would have to do is highlight this, and then remove duplicates, like so. Okay, actually it got grayed out there. So what I can do is just go like that, I hit control shift, I scoot it over with my right uh, arrow button, and then down while still holding control shift, and I went all the way down, and I don't care if it's 247 or 200,047, remember that Excel can hold 1 million records, Excel 2007 and up. I'm now just going to hit the up arrow while still holding on to shift and control, and I zoomed right back up, okay? now. Um, if I want to add some data validation in here, let's say I wanted to make a custom form and I wanted to uh, only allow a certain amount of values, whether that was age, if it was days off, whether it was um, certain amounts of employees that were new, that were being submitted to on some Excel sheet or whatever, um, I could make data validation requirements. So for instance, I did notice that maybe some people were getting in um, Excel spreadsheets on individuals who were beginning to work with the government or something like that. Here, if we wanted to, we could add, well, one, we want to make sure they don't try and sneak in any whole, uh, any decimal points or any, or any characters in there um, or anything else. So we only want to allow whole numbers, right? And we, you can ignore blanks, and we want data between blank and blank, okay? So you can establish some sort of validation regarding that, okay? And then, of course, you can do, I just got air. <laughs> developing my own errors here. Um, then you can of course uh, make some error alerts if you want to or warning or just information. Title it and add your error message in there. That's more on the development side, okay? But let's get into some really cool little macros that we've developed here, okay? So I want you to look at this. Now this is one of the most important um, equations in Excel. It's called the VLOOKUP. It's very daunting to many people. Hopefully I can explain it in a very simple way here, okay? So, I have age here that I've, that I've developed because I have another tab down here that has age and I was just messing around with age and I turned it into percents and I can format that back over to number here and turn it down to zero decimal places so it appears back the way it should. Now if I come back here and I want to establish my VLOOKUP, okay, all you have to do is you name your source, which is our column here. You need to have a unique source for the VLOOKUP to correlate the ID with the ID in the other sheet, right? Um, so here we have our ID, which is column A, semicolon A, right? And then we have our, of course, source data, which is the sheet name, right, source data down here. A through L. L is actually the age column that we're specifying, right? While A in the other sheet is the ID. So we're going to go from here, boom, all the way over to L. Now if I wanted to make a VLOOKUP and pull in everyone from Europe, I would just do A through K. Then we just count out the names of the columns, I mean the numbers of the columns, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, to 12. And if it was 13, it would be a through M would be 13. So as you can see at the end of the equation, you just put 12, okay? And then you have a choice between true or false, so you can do a fuzzy lookup. So something that may be close to the value, but not really being that close. In my experience, you never use true. You always use false, because who wants to know fuzzy data? I don't know who created that term, but it doesn't make much sense to me. Always use false, okay? And so that's your first dipping into the whole VLOOKUP phase, all right? Now moving over to a really fun, much easier equation. These are known as if statements, okay? So as you can see here, I just wrote equals if, and then I wrote D2, just specified my cell name. If, if D2, which is the income, if income is less than 100,000, then I just put quotes, cha-ching, if not, not too bad though, or not bad though, right? Which is the else statement.
right? So it's either, if it's over 100,000, cha-ching. If not, not bad, though, okay? So as you can see here, as I drag this down, Excel is already making my commentary for me as I drag this down, okay? And as well, if I want to drag down my VLOOKUP, you'll see here where VLOOKUP is not represented. This is the beauty of VLOOKUP. This is only going to be able to correlate those ages that have associated IDs in the source data sheet. Okay? So you don't have to go line by line and looking through which ones. And you'll find times to be able to use this where, you know, you're not going to have, you know, 5,000 things, 5,000 rows, but maybe you'll have 400 or 300. And somebody asks you to actually do that. You don't want to do that manually. You want to try and do a VLOOKUP or you want to give me an email and have me come over there and do the VLOOKUP for you. Okay? And you can watch and take a note and then maybe you'll be able to do it the next time. All right? Now we're going to move on to one more really cool trick in Excel. Okay, and another question I get all the time is, what's a pivot table? And pivot tables sound like they're really difficult to make. And I'm going to show you how to do pivot tables in about 30 seconds, okay? So all we have to do, we go to pivot tables. We go to insert. So let's say your boss says, I want a pivot table, and I want breakdowns by X, Y, Z, B, F, and G. You say, no problem, boss. Go over here, go to insert, and then you go to pivot table. It's basically as easy as that. I'm not joking. So you click pivot table, right? And they're going to auto-highlight basically every cell in your sheet. Just just don't don't pay any attention to this. Just click OK. It's going to be fine. All right. So now you're presented with this screen. OK. But what's important is this stuff right here. OK. So these are the fields that you're going to have in your report. Right. So you can click on this. Right. So now we have IDs. So some of the IDs. Now we're going to have children, marital status, yearly income. Now look at this. Look at this building out. Boom, boom. Boom. So now it's getting a little big, right? It's getting a little unruly, right? That's because the Excel is automatically discerning what we want to see in the, the values tab, okay? Now, now the values tab right down here is really the bread and butter. It's really like wh where you want to see all the stuff, okay? So like when someone asks for a pivot table on something, you see, look, I can just drag out this stuff and I can just rip it out of here if I don't like it. See? That's all I need. All right, so let's see. Let's just get gender. Let's start with gender, right? But let's go over to values. So we bring this over to values, and it becomes the count of gender, right? So if I go here and I go to gender, I can drag gender in again, right? Check that out. So now I have gender, and then I have count of gender. So just because I click on here doesn't mean that I can't jam it into the values tab, all right? So now I'm gonna got, I, got, I, got, I got male and female, and then I got the counts on both, right? So now I want to go with children, Okay, so now I have the sum of the children, right, that were produced by the female and the male, okay, within here, all right, and now I want the education, right, and then I want the occupation, but here I want, I want to move this over, I want, I want the occupation, I want the uh, the occupation to be maybe removed out of here actually because that kind of really gets that's too crazy. The key thing about pivot tables is sometimes you don't want them to get too crazy, right? Because usually a manager is looking for a pivot table to be a very nice, easy summation of what they want to look at. Okay, so play around with play around with the data that you have and see what your see what your manager wants. You know, if they're like, I want a pivot table on X to X, you can always make two, right? You can see that here when I add my pivot table, I can just rename this. This is typically what I'll do. And I'll be like, pivot on gender, uh, gender and, uh, and education, right? So if you want to do that, you can, you can just you finish off with that. And then you want to add in another one, right? So we go in, we add another pivot, right? And let's do region by age. And then let's add in yearly income right but let's not have some of yearly income let's have that broken out like that that's kinda rough but as you can see the stuff grows exponentially now you're like where did my where did my stuff on the right hand side go where did my pivot stuff go You just click on the pivot uh, the pivot cell and it'll come right up okay and you can actually right click and you can refresh this if the data that your sheets representing has changed you can just click refresh it's not a big deal Okay, so isn't that great? Now you guys learn Pivot as well.
Okay, and now we're going to move on to our last topic. And the last thing I want to touch on related to Microsoft Excel is some people ask me, Brian, how did you make that so fast? Nobody can make that that Excel document or that access that, that access database that fast. It's not humanly possible, right? So this is my biggest secret, okay? And I usually don't tell people this, all right? Now normally people will go through Visual Basic or they go to macros and they hit Alt F11 and they they start making some macro, you know, within here by hitting Alt F11 and they go into some like you know Visual Basic developer. I don't do that, okay? Most times, all right? Now what I'm about to show you is pretty awesome. All right, these are all the templates for Microsoft Excel. All right, these are huge, right, and they're all rated, right, and and the lists are endless. Like it basically is like, what what type of Excel document do you want? And there it goes. You know, we got we got loan amortizations. We have we have basically everything that you could potentially ever think of. Business loan approval analysis, quarterly cash flows, forecast of sales goods. Channel sales forecast, 20 month sales forecast. All right, so we just download this and it downloads immediately, right? And we're basically good to go in about, I don't know, five to six seconds. It's already done and it's opening right now and it's basically ours. What we can do at that point is we can alter it and use it to whatever the heck we want to use it for. Okay? Boom, that's ours. And you can see these these are these are these are all if then you'll notice these, right? The if statements. So, you know, when in doubt, you can always go to Microsoft. They have great amazing templates. Now I'm going to move on to a really quick wrap up of Microsoft Access and you guys will be well on your way. Okay, so here we are in the Northwind database. This is Microsoft's flagship fake database. You'll always see it. It's great, and nobody else does it. Oracle sure as heck doesn't do it. That's for sure. Okay, so right here I'm in the login, okay? And this is all inside the fake database, all right, that I've, that I've just downloaded. And this is one of the better ones, okay? Now, as you can see within here, we have our standard reports, okay? So I got our monthly sales report, okay? And they allow you to choose... And we got some drop downs built into here. And then we have our forms. We have the fake data built in. And we have some macros built in here, which are some of the really coolest parts about Microsoft Access. Okay? Because all Microsoft Access and any business application, I don't care if it's Facebook, Halo, or Microsoft Access. You have the presentation layer, you have the business logic layer, and you have the database layer. And that's everything and everything that's ever been created on a, on a computer ever. Um, and you'll see here we just have some simple visual basic uh, built in here to just do some basic stuff. Okay? And we have a reports which are very easily designed. You just hit the design view button. This is in Access 2007. It's Access 2010. Remember, Microsoft Access holds two gigabytes. Get them two, not three, not one. Okay. If you need to augment it, you need to go into Access Options, and you can enable it to compact itself on close. Okay. So when you delete a table in Access, it isn't gone until you compact the database. What you can do is you can set it to auto compact within the database and I forget where it is. It's 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 somewhere around here. They got oh here we go. Compact on close. So you enable that and every time the individual closes the database, it compacts it. Okay? If you have problems with uh, trust trust center settings and you have all these really annoying shields that pop up, you need to augment your trust center settings and you need to go into the privacy options or add-ins or trusted locations and you and you say uh, allow trusted locations on my network not recommended but if you're in a closed network with a bunch of firewalls like n you know you're not going to have any problems if you especially if you're using a lot of access it's not going to be an issue okay now access frontends can link into SQL server and they can link into Oracle they can link into my I think my my SQL as well why would you want to do that because they're just really rapid to develop and of course you can develop in other as in other programs but you know this is very easy and this here, obviously, this is the query. These are some of the most, and this is, this is the real, real bread and butter of access right here, okay? Table, relationship, table, relationship. These are joins, okay? So that was a very basic breakdown on access. I, I encourage you guys to pick it up. Forget the books. Stay on YouTube. Pick up, uh, pick up access and start playing around with it. Download the Northwind database and uh, let Microsoft uh, Office take you uh, where you want to go. If you have any questions, uh, send, me, send me them, and I'll try and send you an answer. Thanks.